My girlfriend, 24-year-old female, and I, 24-year-old female, made it official and started telling family and friends we're dating. The first time we cuddled, she smelled like dog poop. I didn't want to put my nose near her, and that's the only thing I could think about being close to her. I pushed it aside. We made plans on the fly that night, and I didn't think too much of it. She probably didn't get the chance to shower before coming over and forgot to brush her teeth. I, regretfully, overlooked it completely. Today we watched a movie and cuddled. The smell wasn't as intense, but still bad. It didn't smell like dog poop this time, but as if she wore a dirty beanie for three days straight and didn't wash her hair after. I was so disappointed because I was planning to kiss her tonight and make a move, but couldn't pull myself to because of the unclean smell. What do I say to her? I really like her, and I couldn't break up with her because we just made it official. She's kind, caring, understanding, funny, and a joy to be around. I don't want to hurt her feelings, and I definitely don't want to break up with her. I see a future together, but I need something to change. Any words of advice? Edit. A lot of people seem confused, so I'll clear it up a little bit. We've hung out a lot the last few weeks. Three times a week, and I drive in my car everywhere we go. We've hugged a lot, and I never smelled her in any of those moments until we were up close and personal. The only times I ever smelled it were those two times I put my head on hers. A lot of you mentioned it could be her diet, her hair, her shower habits, her mental health getting the better of her and being unhygienic, her pets, her shower, shampoo, body wash products, or new piercings. She has diagnosed gastroenteritis and something else with her gut. So she has severe digestion issues that caused chronic pain and can't eat certain foods and has a hard time eating in general. This also leads to mental illnesses, but I don't think it's a lack of shower. I think it could be her hair and maybe not washing it as often, which makes sense because she has very, very short hair. She has two older dogs, but when I've been at her house a few times and nothing suspicious came up, she's not a dirty person and she takes care of herself. She has ear piercings that are healing, so maybe that too. So there's probably a lot of contributing factors. Eating habits, living with pets, digestion issues, and maybe she's not washing her hair a lot, or new healing ear piercings. It's a sensitive topic, and I'm taking her out later today and mention something. I'm gonna say I'm allergic to her hair shampoo and ask her to please change it. She's very kind and understanding, so yes, the conversation will be embarrassing and uncomfortable, but I will support her the best I can and be understanding and accommodating as much as she has with me. Then I guess we'll see what goes on from there. Thank you for the positive comments. I know this isn't uncommon in partners, and after reading your advice, I know how to address it. Much appreciated. Update, I have to break up with her. Today was the worst she ever smelled. I never smelled it until my nose was to her hair until today. I couldn't be in the car with her, and the movie we went to sucked because it was all I could smell and think about. I didn't even take time to say goodbye, just got out of the car, gave her a respectful hug, and left immediately. She looked depressed and disappointed, pulling out of the driveway. I can't look at her the same. Y'all, this is so bad, and I feel so bad for her. I have secondhand embarrassment for her. I wish things could have worked out. I really liked her. Gonna break up with her tonight. I know it's a jerk move, but I don't think I can tell her the real reason. I'm just gonna blame it on the stress I'm going through. Because life is shoot right now, even without my girlfriend in the picture. I wish I didn't put myself in this situation. It's funny in hindsight, but geez, I'm over it. Gonna laugh and cry on the down low with my friends over the next few days. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Is she attempting to train her hair to go longer between wash days by any chance? If that's the case, it doesn't sound like it's working and she should just wash her hair more regularly again. That's my initial thought at least. Comment two. So this is going to sound absolutely crazy, but is it possible her shampoo conditioner is scented like lilies or something? Certain floral scents can absolutely smell disgusting to certain people, even like poop. Now for the update. Hey everyone, it's been a week since my last post, and boy do I have an update for you. 
Remember how I was planning to break up with my girlfriend because of the smell issue? Well, things took a turn, and not in the way I expected. So, I was all set to break up with her, right? I had this whole speech prepared about how my life was too stressful and I needed space. But when I went to meet her, she greeted me with the biggest smile and a surprise. She had booked us a fancy dinner at this place we'd always talked about going to. I was floored. I mean, how could I break up with her after that? We had a great time at dinner, and she seemed so happy. I couldn't bring myself to ruin the evening. But then, as we got closer, that smell hit me again. It was like a mix of sweat and something sour. I tried to ignore it, but it was tough. After dinner, we went back to her place, and that's when things got steamy. We started kissing, and I was trying to stay in the moment, but the smell was still there. I couldn't ignore it anymore. I had to say something, so I brought it up as gently as I could. I told her I noticed a scent and was worried about her health. She got really quiet, and then, to my shock, she started crying. She confessed that she'd been struggling with her hygiene because of her depression. It was a side of her I hadn't seen before. Turns out, her mental health had taken a nosedive recently. She'd been feeling so down that she couldn't muster the energy to take care of herself the way she used to. She was embarrassed and thought I hadn't noticed. I felt like a complete jerk for even thinking about breaking up with her without knowing the full story. We talked for hours, and she told me about her struggles with her mental health and how it was linked to her chronic pain and digestion issues. It was a lot to take in, but I was glad she opened up to me. We decided to work through it together. I helped her come up with a routine to make things more manageable, and we even went shopping for some new hygiene products that might help. It was nice, you know, feeling like we were tackling a problem as a team. But here's the twist. A few days later, I started noticing the smell again, even after all the changes we made. I was confused and a little frustrated. I mean, we'd been working so hard on this. Then one day, I was at her place and I saw her older dog. The poor thing was having some issues and had made a mess on the floor. That's when it hit me. The smell wasn't just her, it was the dogs too. They were old and having accidents, and she was so overwhelmed with everything else that she hadn't been able to keep up with it. I helped her clean up, and we had a long talk about the dog's care. She decided to take them to the vet to see if there was anything that could be done to help them. It was a tough situation, but we were dealing with it together. Now here's the bittersweet part. As we were working on all these issues, I realized that our relationship had changed. We were more like caretakers and less like girlfriends. The romance had taken a back seat to all the other stuff going on. I still care about her a lot, but I'm not sure if we can get back to where we were before all this happened. It's like the spark got lost somewhere in the midst of the mess and the smell and the vet visits. Wife wanted open marriage 2.5 years ago to avoid divorce and now she wants to update terms, but I refused. Oh boy, she's seeing my old college roommate for a year. Two and a half years ago, my wife Sarah, 36 year old female, asked me to open our marriage. She strongly implied that the alternative was divorce. After thinking it through, I said yes, primarily because we have two children. I worked long hours and the thought of divorce sounded horrible. So I set up some ground rules. No bringing dates into our house, no dating mutual friends, acquaintances, family members, or colleagues. I wanted to keep things private. For the next two years, I focused on my job and my kids. I worked long hours and spent any free time I had on my kids. I didn't have time for dating, so I didn't even try. I moved to another room because the thought of Sarah having intimacy with another man and then sleeping in my bed felt horrible. Our relationship became purely transactional. We became partners in raising kids. I didn't want to know anything about her intimacy life. This summer, I managed to fulfill my financial goals. I have no debt whatsoever. Both of my kids have enough money in their college funds. And all I have to do is keep adding some savings every month into the fund I made for their first home deposits. So I did some math and decided to cut my work hours from 74 hours to just 30 per week. Sarah wanted to take on more debt to buy another house and a new car, but I said no. I used my free time to finally take a much needed vacation. I took my older son with me to tour the US together. 
I also did some renovation work on our house and turned the basement into a man cave. I started working out and playing sports, leading a healthier life. Then I actually started trying to land a date. For me, just having intimacy with somebody is not my thing. I want to at least be friends before that. I want to go out together, watch movies, have fun, and have intimacy. So I dated a couple of women and found a woman named Jane with whom I clicked. With Jane, I went out to concerts, art galleries, comic cons, movies, and we also had an intimacy relationship. Sarah wanted to talk about my dates, but I said no. Then I caught Sarah snooping through my phone and we had a very strongly worded argument. Now Sarah wants to update the terms of our open marriage. She wants us to repair our marriage by going to counseling. She wants us to sleep in the same room and go outside and have fun together. Our outside of marriage relationships are supposed to be strictly intimacy and nothing else. We are also supposed to talk about our intimacy partners. I told her that I am content with the situation as it is and I don't mind if she finds a partner to go out with. I encouraged her to do so and I don't want to talk about our partners. She is holding her ground. At this point, I'm split between trying to fix our marriage and handing her the divorce papers. I need advice. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, you two didn't open your marriage. You ended your marriage 2.5 years ago to become roommates and co-parents. That's all the two of you are now, but neither of you seemed to care about that until you got a girlfriend. You didn't find an intimacy partner. You found a relationship. That scares the hell out of your wife because she's reading the writing on the wall. Comment two. An open marriage doesn't mean moving to a separate bedroom and having a transactional relationship. What you both did was end the marriage years ago, just not legally. Sarah can stand her ground all she wants, so can you. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the comments on my last post. It's been a rough week and I've got quite the update for you all. So, after Sarah's shocker about wanting to change the terms of our open marriage, things got even more intense. I thought I had seen it all, but this week proved me wrong. First off, let me give you a bit of history that I didn't mention before. Sarah and I met in college and we were each other's first serious relationship. We got married young and for a while, everything seemed perfect. But as the years went by, Sarah became more distant. She started going out more, leaving me with the kids. I didn't mind at first, but it became a pattern. That's when she dropped the open marriage idea on me. Now back to the present. After our argument, Sarah started acting differently. She was trying to be more attentive, cooking my favorite meals, and even suggesting we watch some old movies we used to love. It felt like she was trying to woo me back. Meanwhile, things with Jane were heating up. We had this undeniable chemistry, and I found myself looking forward to our dates more and more. Jane knew about my situation at home, and she was incredibly understanding. She never pushed for more than I could give. But then the twist came. One evening, I came home early from a date with Jane to find Sarah in tears. She confessed that she had been seeing someone regularly for the past year, someone I knew. It was my old college roommate, Mark. I was floored. Mark was one of my closest friends, and he had been to our house multiple times since we opened our marriage. He had even met Jane. I felt betrayed. Not only had Sarah broken our ground rules, but she had also lied to me for a year. We had a huge confrontation, and she admitted that she wanted to close our marriage again because Mark had ended things with her. He had met someone else and wanted a monogamous relationship with her. I was angry, hurt, and confused. I didn't know what to do. On one hand, I felt like this was my chance to finally hand Sarah the divorce papers. On the other hand, I couldn't shake off the years of history we had together. In the midst of all this, Jane dropped a news of her own. She was moving across the country for a job opportunity. She had been planning this for months, but didn't want to tell me until things were final. I was happy for her, but it also meant that our relationship had an expiration date. So here I was, my marriage in shambles and my newfound happiness with Jane about to end. I had some serious thinking to do. I decided to give Sarah a chance to explain herself further. She told me that she had felt neglected for years, even before we opened our marriage. She said that being with Mark made her feel wanted again, but she realized it was just a fantasy. 
She missed what we had in the beginning, and she was willing to do anything to get it back. I was torn. Part of me wanted to try and fix things for the sake of our kids and the love we once had. But another part of me couldn't forget the betrayal. In the end, I agreed to go to counseling with Sarah, but I made it clear that I wasn't making any promises. We started seeing a therapist, and it was rough. We dug up a lot of old issues, and there were a lot of tears and raised voices. As for Jane, we decided to make the most of the time we had left. We went on more dates, spent nights together, and created memories I knew I would cherish after she was gone. Now, I'm living in a strange limbo. Sarah and I are working on our marriage, but it's a slow and painful process. And with Jane, I'm counting down the days until she leaves. It's a bittersweet feeling. I'm trying to mend a relationship that's been a huge part of my life while simultaneously preparing to say goodbye to someone who brought me so much joy in such a short time. Husband jokes that he bought our house with his money, and now I wonder if he secretly wishes I was working. Oh boy, he's in for a surprise. He'll stop me and say, my house. And when I get upset, he goes, it's my house, but since I'm yours, you get to live in it, or something similar. It makes me feel so bad when he does that. He sort of does it jokingly, but it happens without fail almost every time. And I've tried to tell him it's hurtful, and he just laughs and says he's kidding. For context, we, sorry, he, bought a house last year right before we got married. I was part of the entire process since we already lived together, but he put his savings into the down payment, and it was his name on everything for obvious reasons. I had recently spent the last of my savings to pay off student loans and was only doing freelance remote work, so I wasn't really bringing in much money and was trying to focus on my mental health. He has a really good paying job and always said he was happy to support me. I've even talked about getting a job in my field again if that would make him happy and he assured me I don't need to. Cool. But now it just feels like because his money is what buys mostly everything, that I'm some mooch just living off of him. Mind you, I'm pregnant with our first kid due very soon. This was all discussed extensively that I was to be a stay-at-home mom. So, why does he feel the need to hurt me like that? Does he secretly wish I was working and bringing home more money? Does he think I'm pathetic? It makes me feel like I'm a freaking roommate who hasn't paid rent and he's doing me a favor. And another thing that confuses me is if my parents' relatives ever want to give us anything, like a wedding or baby shower gift, he gets annoyed because he wants to be the one to buy that stuff for us and doesn't want to rely on other people. Edit to answer and address some common questions. 1. There was no prenup and no mention of wanting to keep assets split after marriage. We have a joint bank account, and I also maintain my old accounts under just my name. 2. Some people suggested he just wants to feel appreciated. I know that's not the case because, one, he explicitly hates being thanked. He says it makes him feel like he's doing it just for the praise, and that makes him feel bad. 2. I find ways of showing my appreciation by cooking, cleaning, managing everything in the home, taking care of him, etc. 3. I don't want to portray him as some controlling jerk who doesn't let me do things. It's tough to paint an accurate picture since I don't want to give out my entire relationship story on Reddit. I have freedom to do whatever I want and he is supportive. It's just little things like this that make me question his deeper feelings. Even though any time it comes up he reassures me he is happy to support me and doesn't think I'm any less than he is. 4. I want to be a stay-at-home mom. I don't want to put my child in daycare. He and I both feel that way. The possibility of remote work is still there too, if I feel I can balance both. But I think the deeper issue lies in our communication, and that's on me too. 5. After taking into consideration the comments and different perspectives here, I am going to address him tomorrow. Today was bad because he worked late and was exhausted, and try to be as open about how I feel as I can. I'll update here when I do. Thanks to everyone who felt the need to help. I do feel very validated in my concern at the very least. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment 1. He bought the house before you got married because he knows it will be a premarital asset in his name alone and you won't get half if you ever divorce. That he's resentful 
that he can't isolate you from your relatives enough so that you are entirely dependent on him is very telling. Abuse often starts after the kid arrives because you're stuck. Right now it's emotional and perhaps financial. Regardless of your discussion to be a stay-at-home mom, you should keep some kind of job to ensure your independence because I suspect he's backing you into a very dark corner. This is all doom and gloom, but really, you're married. This is not how marriages should operate. You should be a team that's building a life together, ours, regardless of roles. Comment two. Mind you, I'm pregnant with our first kid due very soon. This was all discussed extensively that I was to be a stay-at-home mom. Taba, your husband's behavior would make me pause. In your shoes, I'd not consider it safe to be a stay-at-home mom at this point. I'd start looking into finding jobs ASAP, share parenting responsibilities, or find a daycare nanny to take over. I'd not continue being dependent on this man with this attitude. I mean, when you discussed being a stay-at-home mom, how will finances work? Will he pay into your pension? Do you have free access to the joint account? Do you get your own allowance as well? Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for all the comments and advice on my last post. I really appreciated the different perspectives and it gave me a lot to think about. So here's what happened over the past three days. I finally sat down with my husband and had a heart to heart about how his comments were making me feel. It was tough to start the conversation, but once we got going, things took a turn I didn't expect. He actually got really quiet and then out of nowhere, he started crying. I've only seen him cry once before, so this was big. He told me that he's been feeling super stressed at work and worried about becoming a dad. He said he felt like he had to be the provider and protector, but was scared he wouldn't be good enough. He admitted that his comments were a way to cope with his own insecurities. It was a shock to hear all this because he always seemed so confident. We talked for hours and I reassured him that he's already an amazing husband and will be an incredible dad. I also told him how his comments were hurtful and made me feel like I wasn't contributing enough to our family. He was really sorry and promised to stop making those jokes. The next day, he surprised me by coming home early from work with a bunch of baby stuff that my parents had wanted to give us. He apologized for being stubborn about accepting help from our families and said he realized it was okay to rely on others sometimes. It was a huge relief to see him let go of that pride a little. But that's not even the biggest news. The following day, he came home with an envelope that had my name on it. Inside was paperwork adding my name to the house deed. He said he'd been thinking about it for a while and realized that it wasn't just his house, it was our family home. I was speechless. It was such a thoughtful gesture and made me feel truly equal in our partnership. And then, as if things couldn't get any better, my water broke that night. We rushed to the hospital and after a long labor, we welcomed our beautiful baby into the world. My husband was by my side the entire time and when he held our child for the first time, I saw a new level of love and commitment in his eyes. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.